You know what's the joke in a movie titled Vaccine War virus is not the villain well as per the makers the greatest villain is china the second greatest villain is media and the third greatest villain wait for it till i discuss welcome to world cinema forum i am your friend rj and i am here with a review and analysis of vaccine war starring nana patekar pallavi joshi and directed by none other than the great vivek agnihotri well it was told to us that vaccine virus is a timely celebration of indian scientists efforts to create an indigenous vaccine against covid-19 but vaccine war turns out to be a rant against the critics of the present times who raise the speed versus efficacy issue at the time of vaccine development and often questioned the government's commitment to science well vaccine war is based on going viral a book written by dr balram bhargav it talks of the account of making co vaccine now director vivek agnihotri efficiently dramatizes the commitment and courage of the former director of the indian council of medical research and his dedicated team of scientists drawn from the iisc mr and the national institute of virology nana patekar plays dr bhargav's character as the director general of the icmr while pallavi joshi portrays dr priya abraham the chief of niv girija oak nivedita bhattacharya and arupam kher also feature in key roles Vaccine war boasts of many things from questioning China and the World Health Organization on not revealing the source of the virus to big pharma trying to hamstring the Indian government's effort to be self-reliant in vaccine manufacturing the film is dotted with conspiracy theories but in its effort to find an antagonist in the real story agnihotri crafts a cardboard villain in the form of rohini singh dhulia played by raima sen a science editor who deliberately wants to create doubts around the indian vaccine to bring the government down with the help of a toolkit provided by her foreign sponsors but the fact is that the film is placed more as a metaphorical punching bag in the narrative to be pummeled with labels like terrorist and swine roar against rohini makes the film increasingly sound like it is a part of a toolkit to keep critics of the government in check the film preaches that we separate the country from the government but the makers become conveniently selective without underlining how the country's robust vaccination program helped in creating a new vaccine with existing technology the film suggests that a sense of purpose and an urge to be self-reliant has crept into the system under the current dispensation and underlines how it freed it from the red tapeism during the pandemic As a borrowed metaphor, Agnihotri pastes Manraj Bhatia's iconic theme, drawn from Rig Veda chants for Sham Benegal's Bharat Ek Khoj, based on Jawaharlal Nehru's The Discovery of India, to indicate the heralding of New India. As per the movie, the World Health Organization is a helpless body. The international agencies won't approve India's indigenous vaccines. The Delhi government demanded four times more oxygen than was required. foreign pharma companies and vaccine manufacturers are blackmailing india everyone is at fault except the center there's one dialogue in the film where the cabinet secretary out of the blue mentions that india is an atmanirbhar country and vivek agnihotri misses no chance in telling the audience that there are orchestrated campaigns against india globally and a deliberate discrimination of our country what a pity and hence revealed the third villain of the movie everyone who is against the central government of india or everyone who is not the central government of india watching this movie made me think that what it could have been if it was directed by someone sensible like ashutosh gawarikar or for the matter of fact rajan dk well this whole movie would have been a totally different perception there were so many things that vaccine war could have told us in detail for instance the film shows an incident from march 2020 when thousands of indian citizens got stranded in iran after a covid wave overtook the country the icmr niv decided to send scientists to iran to set up testing labs and evacuate indian citizens from there but indian citizens were stopped at the airport because they didn't have rupees 1 lakh to pay for excess luggage in another incident scientists from pune's niv were made to catch monkeys for vaccine related experiments in the depth of nagpur's forest where they were also stuck for many days in fact in the book that the film is based on dr bhargav wrote 
a dedicated team from ICMR and IV traveled to areas of Maharashtra to identify sites for animal capture. The Maharashtra Forest Department helped to track them down, scanning several square kilometers of forest for days to track the monkeys before finally finding them near Nagpur. The scientists were lacking resources at every step and were short-staffed, but that was not addressed in any manner in the film. There is a scene in the movie which made me laugh a lot. Everywhere the journalist Rohini went, she is accompanied by four to five people as camera persons, research assistants, etc. But on the other hand, ICMR and NIV teams are perpetually seen not having enough people. Now I have a question that is the film suggesting that a private media house has more resources than the government of India? Or is the film just avoiding getting into the cause of these issues? Also, there is no mention of the human cost of pandemic, the lockdown, the many anti-poor policies that wrecked havoc, legit concerns about the regularities about the development of co-vaccine, the loopholes in the data of the different phases of clinical trials, the issue that the vaccine was rushed are all brushed away, citing them as anti-national sentiments. What the film also avoids talking about is India's reputation as the vaccine manufacturing hub of the world. In fact, Agnihotri keeps telling the audience that no one in independent India's history except for the current regime has believed in our scientists or cared about them or paid heed to them. Now everybody knows that it is not true. For many years, Indian pharmaceutical companies have been supplying over 50% of the vaccines required globally for different immunization programs. Pune-based Serum Institute of India is actually the world's largest vaccine manufacturer in the world. Well, I believe the scientists' achievements are no small feat, but it didn't happen overnight. It was built on years of research and tried and tested tools that our health bodies have mastered. Well, leave aside throwing any light on the many other controversies that surrounded the vaccine trials, like COVID lapses, privacy, security threats about Arogya Setu. The film just becomes a huge cry of nationalism when it could have been about scientific temperament. Well, if you ask me what is worth in this movie, the only point that the film decently put across is women scientists were the leading figures who contributed majorly in the development of the vaccine. But just as they put this point across, they go ahead to comment on how these scientists saved the country while they were also doing dishes at home and handling the tantrums of their husbands. Well, I believe it is high time that instead of glorifying this patriarchal expectations of women managing everything, the film could have certainly done things better. And if you ask me whether to watch Vaccine War or not, I would suggest to you, you can give it a miss. That's the end of the video guys. If you're liking the content that we are bringing to you, please press the subscribe button and press the like button and share this video with your family and friends.